Fantasy football for newbies. Yeah. So what is up, everyone? Welcome to the first of many videos for fantasy football that I'm going to be doing. The first video is the intro video for all you newbies. As you can see, fantasy football for newbies is where I'm going with this. So if you've never played fantasy football before, this video series is for you. What we're going to be talking about today is some of the basic fundamentals of getting started and what fantasy football is. So the first thing we're going to talk about, what is fantasy football? Second, getting started. Third, the draft, which is the most important thing in fantasy football. Managing your team. And lastly, what is the goal? Winning, obviously. So right now, what is fantasy football? So that's what we're going to start with right now. What is fantasy football? Fantasy football is a competition in which you draft players from any team in the NFL, whether it be from the Bengals or the Green Bay Packers or I know, God, for, God forbid, the Cleveland Browns. But what you do is you are in a competition with friends or coworkers or family or maybe just random strangers. And what you do is you try to draft the best players possible to create a team that provides you points each week to be whoever you're matched up with or be the person who has the most points. Whatever style of play that they're doing, that will determine what type of points you need to, to accumulate to win. So fantasy football is basically just drafting a team Having them do well in their actual games makes you do well in the fantasy games and therefore makes you win money, pride, whatever it is. So getting started, what you would need to do to get started is either find a fantasy league to join, whether it be through, like I said, coworkers, friends, family, or random strangers. You can go on to many different sites. Um, you can go on NFL.com. You can go on CBS Sports, ESPN, Yahoo, and many others to do fantasy leagues and drafts. Now, once you've found a league to join, what's most important is the draft. So, there's multiple ways to do the draft. One of the preferred methods that people do are what is called a snake draft. What that is, is you have... Obviously, I can't count. So you have X amount of people in the draft, right? Let's say you have 10 people. So in the first round, it's going to be this guy's going to have the first pick. First round, it's going to be the first person. They're going to have the first pick. It's going to go all the way down to the 10th person. But in the second round, so in round two, the person who picked last in the first round is going to pick first in the second round. So then they're going to pick here, and it's going to snake back this way. And as you go through the progressing rounds, it keeps doing this. So if your first pick, you'll get what is essentially called a double pick every time it is your pick after that first round. So when it comes back to you in the second round, you'll get the last pick in the second round, but then you will get the first pick in the third round and vice versa for the person in the 10th spot. Now, the people that are in the middle, they pick at the same spot basically every time. It's every 10 picks they get a pick. The reason why the first and the 10th get that type of setup is because there's such a long amount of time before that person gets to pick. Now the other way that they do drafts, which I'm not gonna have too much detail, but they do an auction. And what they do is say the first person is up, they would put a player up that you want to auction. Everybody has a certain amount of money to bid for players. And basically what you would do is you would throw out a bid and whoever has the highest winning bid gets that player. But then they have the total deducted from their amount and they're now left with whatever the remaining amount is to bid on future players. So it gets a little bit, you know, you got to spend X amount of money per player. You know, it's a lot more research to know how much a player should be worth. But anyways, most of the time you're going to see this type of setup in a draft because it's the easiest and it's the most efficient in my opinion. So moving on to managing your team. So once you've drafted a team, 
What your team's going to look like, you're going to have, usually this is the setup you're going to have. You're going to have your starting QB. You're going to have two running backs here. You're going to have two wide receivers. Then you're going to have what is called a flex spot. Then you're going to have a tight end. You're going to have a kicker. And you're going to have a defense. Which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine roster spots. Now, your total team will be 15. You will have what are called six bench spots. And the reason why you have a bench spots is because there are players that will get hurt or they're out on bye week or maybe they're just not doing well and you want to sit them and you want to bring someone else in. That's why you have what is called the bench. Now, I wrote down flex and some of you beginners are probably, well, what is flex? A lot of times flex can be either another wide receiver or another running back. In some leagues, they make it to where it can be a running back, wide receiver, or tight end. And so that's when it gets a little bit more complicated when they have that tight end in there as well. Most of the time in a flex spot, you're going to want to start a running back. The only time that you would ever start a wide receiver is A, you're short on running backs, or B, you're in a PPR league and you have a better wide receiver than a running back. So once you've, had, once you've drafted your team, you'll want to fill in all your spots and each week you want to make sure that you don't have any players on bye week because if you start a player on bye week they get locked in and you will get zero points for that player so what you want to do is you want to make sure one of these bench guys can fill in in one of these spots at any time for your for your bye weeks or an injured player or anything like that you also have what is considered a waiver wire and what this is is any player that isn't on a team will have an F a next to it in the player section these are called free agents and what these are are players that are sitting off because every team has a limited amount of spots that they can hold players so there's gonna be a lot of players left over that nobody can touch and a lot of times you're gonna see that some of these players are starting to do better or a player got injured and now that person's going to be a starter that's sitting out in the free agent world. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to pick up people off the waiver wire and you're going to drop people that you originally drafted sometimes. Or you're going to pick up people because one of your players is on by. Say your kicker's on by. You want to just drop that kicker, pick up a different kicker. You know, unless you have like Steven Gratowski or a major really good kicker. It's really rare to keep a kicker or defense on your team unless they're absolutely phenomenal. And it's really rare to have one of those top, top spots in the kicker or defense category. So most of the time with defense, I like to call it a rotisserie defense because it's always changing. Every week I'm changing. I'm doing flavor of the week, you know, things like that. But I'll get more in depth with that into another video. So once you've, you know, you've got established with your team, you've picked up and dropped free agents, there's two types of way that people usually do the waiver wire. One is either a, just a priority list to where if somebody's in last place, they have number one priority and it goes in inverse order. So number one has 10th priority. Now, what will happen is, say you're in 10th spot and you have the number one priority and you go after somebody and you pick them, you are now dead last in priority until everyone else uses up their waiver. On some of them, it resets weekly. Some of them, it's ongoing. It doesn't reset. You just get whatever spot you are until everyone goes through it or you do it again and you go back to the back of the line. So think of it as, as you know, you're standing in line and you decide to take someone. Well, now you gotta go all the way to the back and wait till you get to the front again, or you can keep taking people as long as nobody in front of you takes that person. The other way people do it is called a WAB or waiver auction bid. A lot of times you'll get a budget, just like when people did the auction uh, draft, you'll get a budget to bid on players. And sometimes you'll have a $100 budget, $200 budget. It's not real money, it's in the system. But if you really want a player, you can spend your entire load on one player, but you have to remember, that's supposed to last you the entire season length. So once you blow it all, you are out. And if anybody has even a dollar above you, you will not get another single player. So it's very, very important that you manage that waiver auction bid budget. Now, most of the time in the leagues you get in, it's going to be the priority list setup, not the waiver auction. 
So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the goal. The goal is obviously to win. And so, whereas some leagues it may just be bragging rights, I've heard in some leagues where the winner gets to pick the loser's punishment. And in some of them, the loser has to get a tattoo. And what I mean by the loser is the person who comes in dead last. And I've seen some pretty horrible choices for tattoos if you guys really want to get crazy about your wins and losses. Um, if you guys have ever watched the show The League, they have the winner, which wins the Shiva, and then the loser wins the Sacco, and they do a whole year worth of punishment to this person who, who wins the Sacco. Um, so really, it's all about fun and a lot of pride. Um, sometimes you can win a lot of money on it. Now, um, I'm not denoting gambling or, or encouraging it. Um, but, you know, there are people out there that will pay money to play this. Um, there's also daily fantasy leagues that you can get into to win extra money. I know DraftKings does it. Um, there's an app called Draft. Um, I'm pretty sure Yahoo and ESP and a couple other ones get in on it. But the point is, is really the goal is all about winning, all about managing your team and getting to that championship and winning and having the bragging rights. So. I will be doing more videos. Um, they are going to be up soon if they're not already up with, when you're watching this. And I will be going more into depth about draft strategy, managing your team, getting started in certain aspects and other ways, preparing for your draft, you know, things like that. So if you've got a lot out of this video, be prepared to see more. If they're already up, go watch those videos and learn some more about fantasy football if you haven't already. Also, maybe, maybe you think you're a fantasy guru and there really isn't much more you can learn. Well, I implore you to go check out my videos. Maybe you'll learn a new draft strategy. Maybe you'll learn something that you never thought about in a different way. And really, I'm here to, to try to educate you guys, help you guys out to win those league championships. Also, down in the description below, if you're watching this before August 30th, we are, I'm having two leagues. Um, one of them is a PPR league, one's a standard league. Go ahead and click the links down below, join into those leagues, and like I've been saying, if one of you guys can beat me, maybe I'll give away a prize. But other than that, I hope to see you guys in the other videos, and I hope you have a wonderful day.